Um, no, oh. thank you for letting me know. <laughs> oh, now, now yeah, they say it. Louder, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's because of like in image rights, you know, like if you're gonna publish this somewhere, like the people that are part of it have to agree or didn't like know that you are being recorded, so you don't have problems yeah. with, you know. There is no login sneaking recorded. <laughs> yeah, or so we can use your pretty face. So, all right. So tonight we're gonna be talk about Dr. Bezerra de Menezes in the. Um, uh, it's using our gifts for good as he was. So, but before we start, let me just see if I have everything. Right. I just would, would like, as I said before, to ask you guys to have a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil ready or anything that you can take notes and write down. All right, and I will give you time to think about, I will just pop some questions. And you just, it's very simple. There is no tricky question here. It's very simple answers all right no tricky no hitting or anything like that no t's and c's <laughs> just a simple answer all right so i would like you to be very honest and just simple answer the question all right so what's your favorite food don't need to say just write down please what's my favorite what uh, food. Uh, food. favorite food just write down. Very simple. That one is hard for me. That's not that, that's not easy. One of your favorite foods, if that helps. Choose one that you really like it. Between I don't know many dishes. <laughs> just one food. Okay. I know we liked like 10, 20, but just for the the sake of the exercise, choose one one dish. Can be less a savory dish, a sweet dish, doesn't matter. Just write down. One of your favorite foods. Done. Done? Okay. Next. <laughs> oh, boss. <coughs> Next question. Do you have Facebook? Yes or no? It doesn't matter if you don't use that much. Okay. Next question. What? What is your favorite park or place or restaurant? A place that you like to go. Can be any of these three. Just like one for the exercise. If it's possible here in Brisbane. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let me put this louder. To make it Carmen, easier. Carmen, could, Carmen couldn't hear. Like can be a coffee place that you like to go, can be like a park that you like to go for a walk, a restaurant, there is a dish that you love to go there so you can eat your favorite food from the first question. Here in Brisbane. Haji. Haji is connecting. <coughs> I'm just waiting to connect so she can catch up with us. Hi, Ji. So we just answer simple, simple questions here. If you can have a piece of paper and write down those first three questions, please. If you can see them. Um, yes, I can. Sorry, I'm late. I have been a hectic day today. Um, That's all right. Okay. Very okay. simple question. Your favorite food. One of many dishes that we have, just one that you would like it. You can think about it. If you have Facebook, yes or no. The second is the relatively the relative form from Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> and the third question: what is your favorite park, place, or restaurant? Like a place you really like to go, a coffee shop, a place that you like to go and enjoy the time over there. Oh, you forgot the second, Facebook. Do you have Facebook? Yes, no? No, any social media, really. But uh, for this exercise, Facebook, it fits better. Fourth question. What's your favorite plant or flower or tree? Good. 
Next question. What do you do for a living? Are you a student? Are you a mom? It's a kind of do for living because you have many responsibilities as a mom. Uh, so what you do, like, what's your, you know, your mainly job? It doesn't matter if you get, got paid for it or not, but what's your main job? So in that sense, that question is a bit wrong, but you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, next question. What's your favorite book? Or maybe a book that you maybe read now or, I don't know, years ago, that it's a book that is still comes to your mind every time you think about a book and if everyone would ask for a recommendation about the book, which book would you recommend for that person? Good. <coughs> and then the last question, what's your favorite song? Needs to be a song, not a band. Yeah, it could be a band, but for the exercise, just think about a song. I have so many. Just one. That doesn't mean it's the, your favorite or your first choice of always, but a song that you like it. And if it's on the radio, you put it, the volume up, or if you have a chance to, you know, to, I don't know, to do your walk, listen to that song, or I don't know, a, a song that you really like it. Everyone have a song that you always listen and you could be you could listen every day good mm -hmm. okay now put that aside and then now we're going to talk about dr bezerra de menezes okay and then we're going to back to that later on all right okay oh no sorry well one more question so so sorry i forgot the one last question here what's your favorite animal Again, one of many animals that you really like it. I don't know if you really. An elephant, a fish, a whale, a bird, a kind of a dog. It doesn't matter what kind of animal, if it's from the sea, if it's from, can walk on earth or fly over the sky. Just one animal that you like it, think is pretty. I don't know, one animal, right? Now that's the last question. <laughs> All right, now put it aside and then we're gonna be talking about Dr. Bezier. In saying that, before we go there, um, there is a lot of information about him and books that he himself um, wrote after he disincarnated. And so I'm not going into much details about his biography, you know, we're gonna uh, have some bullet point um, points about the most important things that he did while he was here as on his last incarnation as uh, um, so we can have an idea but I believe that for all of that are here present you pretty much know a, a lot about him all right so Dr. Bezerra uh, his full name is Adolf Bezerra de Menezes he was born on 29 of August um, in 1831 in Ceará, Brazil in 38 uh, he starts school and by and in, in uh, 1842 he had to move to Rio Grande do Norte that is another state in Brazil due to some political conflict that his father uh, had because his father was an um, abolitionist or he does he was fighting for the freedom of the slaves so they have to flee from Sierra to uh, get some uh, do some uh, due to some persecution and over there he went to school again he learned latin two years he was really clever huh? and he was even able to act as um, a substitute teacher over there all right in 46 their family his family was able to be back to sierra after he finished his school he uh he always dreamed to be a doctor and he had to move to Rio de Janeiro to join the Academy of Medicine over there. Uh, but his family didn't have any money, even though when he was born, his father had a lot of um, economic, you know, a good economic situation. After they flee due to the political situation, his family didn't have much more money after that. 
So his family put together a bit amount of money and he moved to Hill to study. In, in Hill, he had to work as a teacher doing some math and philosophies um, classes to pay for his university fees. <coughs> Pardon. He graduated in 1856. In 57, he became part of the army in Brazil. He was a surgeon in the army. And he married Maria Cândida de Lacerda. And she disincarnated. Um, oh, sorry, it's 66, not 56. That's a wrong date over there. It's not 56, that's the year. They, um, so she, no, not that, she died in 1866, leaving him with two kids, a boy and a girl. All right. Um, 64. He's 66. He married uh, Cândida Augusta Lacerda. That was um, the sisters of his first wife. And then he had more seven kids. In, and then in 1860, um, he was elected a city councilor. And then he had a very intensive life in political and a bit of um, uh, struggles as well, because he was fighting for the abolition and he was fighting, fighting and trying to have more like a neutral city, you know, where the rights was equal for all and not only for those with money. Um, and he finishes his career in, in the political uh, scenery in, after 30 years. Now he, 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 he works on the political side for over 30 years and brought him some money from that. But that money he used afterwards, um, after that, to help him on his work as a doctor and attend those in need and that didn't have money to pay for, you know, for a visiting doctor or medicines. And after he finishes the career in the, on the politics, he started his work really on the spiritism. That was the plans that the, the higher realms have for him, lucky for us. And how he starts his interest in how he encounters spirits. That happened in 75 that he got a spirit book as a gift from a friend. And this is what he said about it that I read, but I couldn't find anything that was new to my spirit. However, all that was new to me. I I had already read or heard everything that was found in this spirit's book. I worry seriously with this wonderful fact. And I said to myself, it looks like I was unconscious spiritist, or even as is commonly said from birth. So everything that he read on that book resonate with his soul and what he had on his heart, even though he didn't know that it exists as a doctrine and a philosophy. So after reading the spirit's book, he became a, a very uh, hard worker uh, in the spirits and work a lot to grow that movement in Brazil. In, because he was in political, he was a politician, pardon. Um, he made a big speech that was caused a bit of drama on the society at that time that um, he justified his choice of embraces spiritism and that brings him some drama as well. He had a lot of conflict with his family that kind of banished him from the family and that really hurtly, hurt him deeply. And uh, from uh, and after that, he really started to work hard to make the movement kind of grow and spread the word of spiritism. So he will collaborate with the magazine of Reformador. He helped to find on the foundation of the Brazilian Spirits Federation that we call Fabi, uh, but he didn't want to include his name as, as one of the founders. He was very humble with that. But in 1890, uh, 1899, uh, he was elected as a president and uh, um, he worked on the presidents as a president or sometimes vice, uh, vice president until the 1900s when he disincarnated on 11 of April. So this is <laughs> a very simple you know view of his life he of course 
have much, much more about his career in political and what he did about spiritism. Um, he was well known as the doctor of the poor. Um, his office was always filled with the clients that most of the doctors didn't want to, uh, that didn't have money to pay for the, the appointments, that didn't have money to buy the medicine that he, he put on the prescription. Um, he, even though and it uh, even though he made a lot of money uh, as a politician, he used that money uh, for charity, helping people with needs as through his medicine, uh, as his gift. And um, he died very poor. He didn't. His family not even have money to organize his um, bury and all everything that was involved with that. And so they have to do like uh, uh, raise donations so he could be, you know, have a, um, uh, what do you call when you have to lie down people? A funeral, sorry. A funeral and like a, a bit of money was put to help the family as well. And on his last day that he was in bed, a lot of people, they did like a, a visual on beside his bed. So people would sit down for an hour or so to, uh, look after him and um, a way to say thank you for him for all his work as a doctor uh, for those in need. And for him as a doctor, he said that as well. A real doctor has no right to finish a meal, to choose the time, to inquire whether it is far or near, who doesn't help because he has visitors, because he has worked a lot and is tired, or because it's late at night, the, um, the road or the weather is bad, he's far away or on the hill, who above all asks for a car from those who cannot pay the prescription or tells those who cry at the door to find another one. This one is not a doctor. He is a medicine trader who works to collect capital and interest on graduation expenses. This is a ranch who sends to another, the angel of charity who come to pay him a visit and brought him the only stipend that could quench his spirit's thirst for wealth, the only one that will never be lost in the bustle of the life. So this was his, um, his way to look at medicine, to really uh, you know, fulfill his um, duty as a doctor and there's the famous um, story that we know about him that he gave his um, graduation ring for a mom that didn't have money to buy the, the, uh, the pills and the medicine that was in the prescription. So he said to the mom that she should accept that ring because that ring represents what he was there, a doctor. And he only would fulfill that if he could help people um, so that's one of the most famous stories about Bezerra de Menezes. And when he died, uh, Leon Gris, that was um, a medium and one of the uh, lead uh, um, disciples, if I can say like that, of Kardec, said that when such men cease to exist, of course, in the material world, not only Brazil, but the spirits from all over the world grave because of his wonderful uh, work in when he was incarnated here. So what we can uh, see here, uh, as we all know, like that he used all the resources, material, and all the love that he could found inside himself to kind of to do what Jesus taught us to love, to help, to offer kindness, and he used uh, what he knew, he knew by the time as being a doctor to help people. The way that he could, you know, having on his um, uh, on his uh, having people over so he could treat them and and help them with their health. And in saying that, we always make questions. So it's the first slide that we presented here. <coughs> so what is our gifts? So inspired by Dr. Bezerra, what gifts we here now tonight we have that we could offer those out, out there. Not that we can go out now because we're in lockdown, you know, but what gift I have, Jackson, Colleen, 
Alexandre, Nina, G, Alex, that we have as Dr. Bezerra to offer. And if you ask a simple question like that, you say, oh, I'm nothing. He was a doctor, you know, I'm not a doctor. I myself, I'm a cleaner. So what do I have to offer those? As he was so, you know, big and could really do some work. He unifies spiritism. He makes spiritism grow in Brazil and be known by many people. He was like, he was an amazing guy. So what me, a simple person, can be compared to him? What gift do I have to offer that would be, you know, compared to Dr. Brzeza Jimenez? And now I want you to pick up those questions from the first slide, please. Already? So you can open your mic if you wish, so we can discuss that. And then you're going to see that we have many gifts. So, Jackson, what's your favorite food? Guisadinho. Guisadinho. So you know one gift that you have? Mm -hmm. That yes. maybe you can cook for someone that food that you love. Or if you don't know how to cook, ask Carmen your help. <laughs> Carmen is the gifted one. <laughs> yeah, Carmen is the gifted one. <laughs> In fact, I didn't write the full name of the of the food. It's called Guisadinho da Carmen. Guisadinho da Carmen. So that's implied that Carmen is part of that your gift, all right? <laughs> so what Jackson, we can he married Carmen. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> So why we can, you know, have the favorite food? Because food is a kind of express, express love. When you cook for someone that you love or when you have friends or you, when you have family over, you know, we like to put some food together and celebrate around the table. So not, why not use that wonderful gift that is preparing food with love and care and share with the ones that we love? That's an amazing gift that we can start from that. So, um, Irina, do you have Facebook? I, I never use, but I do have. <laughs> okay. Now, one of the great tools of Facebook, <coughs> you know, social media came as a way for us to be connected, but on a, that's my personal opinion. Um, to nowadays, it's more like separate us because we live more like, you know, status on social media, but do not really get, you know, connect with the people. We say, oh, we can still be connected mm -hmm. with people in the other country, but we need, never really go there and say good morning. Um, but anyways, I'm not gonna have, bring this to the discussion, but one tool here that I would like to su suggest for all of you. Facebook has a great tool that show us uh, people's birthday and become a bit more, you know, oh, it's just someone's birthday and we just roll up and not really care anymore. Before we used to send happy birthday, you know, uh, just for the sake of it, you know, just to be social and not be judged about it. But my invitation tonight is that it's Facebook show it once a month, don't need, don't need to be every week, but once a month until the end of this year, or maybe this is something that you would like to, you know, um, put on your routine, um, get one person that Facebook show it's uh, that person's birthday, um, preferable someone that you're not really in touch. If it's a close friend, it's too easy, this exercise. But someone that you don't talk for a while and then Facebook shows, once, choose one person per month of those that list of birthdays and you write a card for that person and send it. You know, a card, maybe remember when you met or you mean, you, you mean a letter? Yeah, I like a birthday card or a letter, you know, just to send that person a personal gift, not only a happy birthday on Facebook, you know. So we can can be like a birthday card or a letter or so with something like, I really wish you a happy birthday, if you wish that. Um, or if you, you know, maybe in trouble with that person, I wish you a happy birthday. I wish we can, you know, um, trying to leave behind the things that we have. I don't know. Just whatever comes to your heart. Choose one person a month so you can really send that person a card. If that person is another country and now due to COVID and all situation, you are unable to send that person a card um, written by your hand, you know, 
or, uh, or type if your handwriting is not that good <laughs> so that person can at least understand what you're trying to say. Um, send an email, but like a personal email, not only a gift from the social media, not only a happy birthday that is, you know, pre-set on those social media. Try to connect with that person, all right? And that's a wonderful gift. Maybe that will make a difference for that person to receive that letter and read and feel the intentions that you put on that letter or the intentions um, that you put on those words when you're wishing that person a happy birthday. Let's try to have this exercise, all right? Let's choose someone this month to send a letter and uh, connect on a deeply, um, on a more deeply way, okay? So, G, what is your favorite park, place, or restaurant? Um, I like the Botanic Garden, the Monte Cuta Botanic Garden, the New Farm Park, and my current favorite, it's called Dickie's Cafe, which is a vegan cafe at New Farm. And it's amazing. It's very good. Okay. okay. So, G, G and all of us, okay? Let's invite someone to go with us to that place. Once lockdown, it's, you know, away. And then we can talk and have a date with that person, you know? Have like a real coffee and have a chat and see how are you doing today? What are you doing with your life? What's news? What's going on? That's a so special I'm, doing, gift. I'm, I'm actually doing exactly that. Um, because um so because of my restriction, I don't I I I I cannot go in big large gatherings. So since I start treatment, what I have been doing is inviting two friends at at a time and we go to a cafe which usually is Dick, Dick's cafe. It, it do exactly that. But two by two, because I can not really go in gatherings. Yeah. So yeah, actually this health condition brought me to this. See, that, and that is beautiful as well. It's a gift from life. We understand your health condition, but that, that maybe brings you the opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one chat with friends that maybe you wouldn't have the opportunity if you're on a gathering 50 and have a more, a, a, a more deeply connection with them. So let's be grateful for that. So let's try to practice that. Um, sometimes we have like gatherings with too many people around and I'm one of those people, but I like as well to invite people over so we can really chat with them. So let's try to um, do this once a month or when it's possible. I don't know. It's just a suggestion. So we can use our gifts to share the place that we love with someone and show them and maybe give them the opportunity to love that place as well. Or maybe give the opportunity to that person show us the place that they love and then we can know a new place to go as well. All right. Um, Colleen, what's your favorite plant or flower? The jacaranda always blooms around my birthday. Uh, and it, it fills the parks and gardens. And I, I love the vibrancy but yeah. the this soft vibrancy, mm -hmm. there is a, a a gentle presence. I I feel that when they are in blossom. Yes. And that's pretty. So why not gift gift someone with a little um you know um what do you call a little tree? A seedling. A yes. seedling of that tree for someone. So that person may have the opportunity to have the same sensation that you have. Or maybe why not send photos of this magnific uh, magnific tree when they're blossoming and send that, what you just said to us, to that person. So she may be this, she may be this, may see the beauty as you do and share with them. So if you love a little plant, a little flower, not choose someone that maybe we are having trouble to connect uh, or get along and say as a sign of peace, you know, the sign of friendship and say, I was thinking about you. This is my favorite flower and I would like to share with you. And you don't need to say more than that if it, that's, um, if you know, the situation is a bit hard, but that maybe is a way to break that ice and start a new connection. 
and forgiveness. Um, so it's another suggestion of beautiful gifts that we have uh, potentially just around us to act, just like Dr. Bezerra. So, um, Alexandre, what do you do for a living? I talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I give uh, I give lights to people. <laughs> you give light to people, yeah. You light you... to people, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Alexandre. Yeah, Alexandre sells on a very simple way, light, right? So, well, he already do that. I know that because he helped me a lot. But you know, if you have can maybe donate one hour. Uh, one hour to help a friend, you know, as Alexandre, he, 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 he understands a lot of lightning and all. So for example, he helped me out here at home, not for free because I have to give him dinner, but on <laughs> that sense, <laughs> but um, it's just a, a kind way to retribute your- But I don't ask, so it's for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but why not use your knowledge to help a friend in need? or maybe to help an institution that could, you know, really take um, that help on board. Like we have plenty around the world. Not, why not try to donate one hour a week, a month or every, I don't know, when is possible. So mm -hmm. if you, we can share our knowledge and that is a beautiful gift. So now you get the sense and I'm just going through other questions so it don't take so long, all right? So what's your favorite book? So maybe you can share send a, a, a copy to a person and say, look, I really enjoyed this book and I think about you, I think you would enjoy. So that person maybe can have a good moment reading that book or a good knowledge or just a good time to, you know, to relax his mind. And what's your favorite song? Maybe we can dance with someone. Like I have a favorite song. I have the songs that um, we had at our wedding and every time at, if it's play uh, here at home, I get my husband and say, let's dance this one. So not enjoy like three minutes and really get the memory about that song brings to you. And invite that person to dance. Even if he's just like... <laughs> <laughs> he loves he's not it. saying anything. I don't know why. <laughs> he's just quiet. So why not use that? that forget thing? about me. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like to... <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, and what's your... So Alex, we now that you show, what's your favorite animal? It's the dog. It's my snowball. It's your dog. Okay. So, for the sake of snowball and all the other animals on planet Earth, why you not? What one thing that we can do? It's a movement called "Take Three for the Sea." Is when every time you're walking and if you see a rubbish, especially plastic, just take three pieces a day. Of course, if you can do more, great. But that is a challenge proposed by this, um, this movement called Take Three for the Sea. So if everyone um, get this commitment of take three pieces of plastic or rubbish when they walk on the streets, swimming on the ocean, we can help clean our planet. You know, so we don't need, I'm not saying that, of course, if you have even more like power you know uh more can be can go far or have as a doctor can offer help on a sense to help like more people to cure disease great but as simple people on a sense that you know we have like normal lives here yeah? we can do a lot we can i just show you a few examples of wonderful gifts that we have that we can share and maybe we just need one of that to change someone's day, to change someone's life. So not, let's not take uh, lose the opportunity to do the best as we can every day of our lives. So if you can choose one of those questions to go ahead, if you can do all of them as a suggestion here tonight, great. But try at least one and that it will be great. It's a great movement. You know, it's a step by step. So that's my suggestion for you tonight. And of course, we have many other opportunities to, to, do, to use our gifts, to do things that we are able to. 
to change someone's life, to change the planet that we are having the experience. We can recycle, just as we take tree for the ocean. We can have we can have better choices about products. We can reduce the amount of meat that we eat. And there is another movement called um, Monday Free. No, Meat Free Monday. If I'm wrong, I try to practice that. You know, that's gonna that already makes a change, a bigger change on the on the planet. So try to choose something that you sympathize and fight and do something for that cause, you know? And there is other things, like we can hug someone, not now in lockdown, but you know the sense of what I'm trying to bring here, you know? When we hug and we share the, the, the intention or the embrace, sometimes it's the only thing that we need. Yeah. We can listen to someone. I still have to work on that. I talk more than I listen, but you know, it's something to work. It's something to looking forward to try to do better. We can laugh more. We can share some jokes. We can share moments of happiness, of dancing and seeing people dance and just laugh at it. Not laugh from at them, you know, but just laughing because it's a beautiful moment. It doesn't matter how that person is dancing. We can pray for someone. That's a great gift that we have to stop for a moment and think about the ones that we love. As we discussed on the last two, we always discuss this on the lecture, but because Lex lecture was about um, obsession and then um, the last two lectures about obsession and forgiveness, you know, that we see how prayer, it's a great tool for us to change ourselves, to change the vibration, to change our surroundings, surrounded. So we have many beautiful gifts. gifts. And everyone is able to practice any of this that we talk here tonight and even more. So just try to do a little bit. Just choose one or two or all of them so we can do our part here and transform this planet better. And I give you a last, uh, one of the last phrase of Dr. Bezeha that he says, he says, Spiritism does not make any demands on its followers. And when I say spirit is here, we can change up, you know, for the teachings of Jesus, God. It doesn't matter. Whatever moves you and makes you do better, you know. So spiritism does not make any demands on its followers. <clears throat> However, those who become aware of its postulates feel naturally constrained to give up from themselves more and more. So what that means, more that we know, more that we gain knowledge, more we have a connection with the divine, more we share, we feel constrained to do better tomorrow and then the following day. Because it's natural for us to learn to love, you know, without any judgment. So it just depends on us to keep doing whatever we can. If today is cook for someone, great. Maybe next week you can cook and send a letter to someone. Then it's two. So you're doing more, just like he said, and so on. So that's the invitation of tonight, that we can do simple steps that are wonderful gifts that we just have here in front of us to make the change, to transform our surroundings, starting with our family, uh, our friends, and then maybe we can change the city that we are living on, the state, and then the world. Because this needs to start with someone. And many times we think simple things doesn't matter, but they do. So can you imagine instead of we try to take three pieces of rubbish from the street and put on the recycle bins and, you know, go to the, the right place for recycling, we just throw to our car window or walk in the street three pieces of rubbish. It would be a chaos. So we have to choose better because we... We are light, we are divine, and we want this planet to survive for the next generation. And we want, we, we want to transform ourselves as well. It's natural for us. It's the law of progression. So we will transform ourselves and we will be like better on the sense that it's natural for us to love without judgment. It's natural for us to care about the, our surroundings. It's natural for us to forgive. We will get there. But needs to start with simple steps, as sending letters, as 
invite someone for dinner, a coffee, invite someone for a walk, send someone a flower. So that's my invitation tonight. So we can do just like Dr. Bezerhedi Menezes with whatever we have in our power to do the change using your gifts. And that's it, people. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments? Or anyone would Thank like you, to add anything? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oi. 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 Who is talking? Hey. I stop listening. <laughs> I can talk. Okay, you go first, G. <coughs> yeah, thank you, Dai. I, I love the presentation because you really merged, you know, the, the biography with some important message, important messages. Um, in terms of his biography, which I didn't have, I was not that familiar that much. Um, what is strike strike me was the fact that he gave his ring because Jackson, you know, what that talks about the attachment, isn't it? Yeah. A person goes and and it, it could be it's not the the monetary value; it's more than that, you know. Is the the meaning of a person goes and study and become a doctor, and then that symbolizes all this, you know, this journey. And then to be able to just give away, you know, it, you have to be so sure and detached and so sure that this is not what it is. This is not what you are. No, because easy path would be, no, this ring here, it, it tells me what I am, right? I am a yeah. doctor, I went through this journey, but no, it's not true, isn't it? You are not a doctor, you're not a mom, you're not, you are much more, you're beyond those roles. And it seems that that just gesture just showed me that, uh, proved to me that he was fully, fully uh, um, understanding that he was fully detached from any role and, and labels, you know, that could be attached to, to his being. Yeah. And that's what was the beauty for me was that particular part, especially because really everything he he did uh, make made sense when he, he was able to do that gesture, and um, and that's I just keep keep reflecting on my life, you know, and things that we <coughs> automatically attach the labels, the roles that we automatically attach to our lives. Would we be able easily to give away or to um, just um, you know get rid of them? like that you know uh, how much part of our life are they how much you know stuck with us are they uh, so i think this just made me reflect about my my life in this and and how much lighter i could live you know, could be if i didn't have this attachment to to some of those labels and roles um yeah, so that was what I, I, I love to, to, to hear because it just yeah. took me to a place to think and to reflect about that. It's, it's very good, Giselle, because he, uh, uh, he um, um, let's say, detached himself from the others, from the other doctors who are, as he said, collectors of dividends from their graduation. But I'm going beyond that. As a doctor, uh, if you are a conscious person, it's not too hard for you to realize the difference you make in people's life. And it's not too hard if you are a, 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 a good person to, um, uh, to realize that it's, you, you, the, 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 the role you play makes difference, not just in your life, but someone else's life. What makes me sad is sometimes there are so many people, so many people that go to work, do their work, and sometimes and most of the time they do well done, but they have no idea the difference they make. And sometimes it's not just the person, 
is the organization of the 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 place where they 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 work that doesn't let them know the difference they make right and this is one of the big motivators for the person to keep working it's sometimes as well the consciousness that the person is doing their best and doing much better to make some people's life better even if the person is in the third fourth level or in a chain of changes but it's important to know what is the difference you make you're not doing going most of the people go there to collect the money from what they have done from the you know job they are supposed or for, for what Because they are told they, to be to to do but they don't know what's the difference they don't know what exactly this brick they lay in that wall how this will make a difference in someone's life yeah. yep. anyone like anyone else would like to comment or add anything Yes, can I continue with that, Jackson? It, it seems that the, the breakdown of the village has brought us to this point. In the village mentality or the, the culture in which we thrive, each of us understand how important it is that we are, each of us are in a community. We have lost our sense of community. So if a person is treated by a doctor, we are scheduled in, we are given opportunity to consult with a person we rarely get to see and we rarely get to to speak on a social level and so therefore we are not in a familial kind of environment and in that way we have become detached from that sense of well-being and that sense of nurturing within the Sangha, within the group that nurtures itself because we value ourselves within that group and the group values you without being told. It is because we don't feel that love. We don't feel comfortable expressing our love to a stranger. We don't feel connected to them because it is a professional relationship and so we lose our sense of humanity our sense of oneness and we feel it is interesting i write each week to uh, the person who processes uh, the the timesheets for the workers that come to assist me during the day and night. I send her the timesheets and she processes them. But in it, I send a letter always saying, here are the timesheets. But I also express to her my gratitude to those that assist me in my every day and my gratitude to her. And I sign it always in love and love, in light and life, Colleen. In response, she always says, and to you too, Colleen, best regards. She feels funny in saying, love, Rachel. Love from me, Rachel. Because she feels a need to follow protocol for each of us to say thank you i love you for me people forgive me because i am as i am and so they think it is an idiosyncrasy of my condition that i love to hug people or i love to say i love you but for a regular person to say to another thanks buddy i really love you 
is almost unacceptable. And this is something that we as a family, as a PESC family, need to overcome with ourselves, between ourselves, to say, not only God bless you, but golly gosh, I really do love you. And thank you so much for being you. To be free to say such words from the heart, to be free to shed a tear, to show your compassion or your connection with me or with you or with your loved ones, it needs to be further explored so that we can break down these barriers of individuation. Individuation works well, but it only works well when we know that we are part of a greater oneness. This separation thing is not meant to be. And separation begins with our mental attitude and our choices of words that we, that we use with one another and ourselves. Best regards, Colleen. Yes, sounds weird. But love in light and life, Colleen, reveals my heart space to you. Yes. Very good. Now you have an example how to sign your letters for those that you're going to write a birthday card. I hope you guys took note of that. <laughs> Thank you, Colleen. Anyone, anyone else would like to comment or, I don't know, make a contribution? No? All good for tonight. So, as another wonderful gift that we have in our hands as a sense of love and community and society that we are, we're going to do a prayer box. Then we can have the names, the one that we wish to send love, light, ask for forgiveness. So I just want to invite you guys to, you know, sit comfortably, close your eyes if you wish. But take a deep breath in so we can make this connection even stronger and focus our heart in the names of people that we wish to send love, light, and care. But first of all, say thank you, God, for the opportunity to be here in the school of life sharing, learning among friends. We thank you for the opportunity to be in the safety of our homes while many doesn't have a roof over their head. So we are sending them our love and our caring. So maybe they may be protect from the elements, be protect from the cold, from the sun. We really would like to send our love for those that are not lucky to have a family member near them. Saying them that we love you and we are send you our love. That maybe they are feeling their hearts that someone is here praying for them and send them love. And we are sure that the angels are there protecting and looking after them everyone on their own journey, surrounded by friends. We, like, we would like as well to send our love for those that may be seeking for treatment in hospitals, in aged care facilities, in any place that you may be in need of any health. We are sending you our love and our light as well. You now have in your spirit fulfilled by the light and love of Jesus. And that gives you resistance, resilience to go through whatever condition your body is going through. We are with you. We are one and we feel your pain. But we are sending you love. 
and we are send you our vibrations and our wish that everything is gonna be solved. We would like as well to send the love for the names that we have in our minds, for the names that we have in the piece of paper near us, for those that we need to forgive, for those that we need to ask for forgiveness. I'm sorry. I love you. Please forgive. And I thank you for having you in my life. And with this beautiful night, have this message from Dr. Bezerra de Menezes, a great spirit that show us love, kindness, charity. We are thankful as well for all your teachings and how you inspire not, not only us, but so many that we can look at you as an example to follow. And for all the spirits that are present here, in the material and on the spiritual realm, that we are able to use our gifts. It may seem simple, but they are amazing and they are great because we are gonna be acting in love and put our energy and love and care on every little step in our journey. And that is only thing that God asks from us. It doesn't matter the size of the job as long as we as long as we put love in our intentions to do good, to offer good for our brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if they are beside us, far away in another country, or maybe in the spiritual realm. We are do our best using our gifts and so be it amen amen <laughs> so that's it guys amen. thank you Dan. thank you Dan. thank you everyone. i love you all we love you too we love you all we love, love you too my birthday is in february so i'm waiting for some letters all right. Remember next year. I thought, for Christmas. Okay. Jesus comes first. Just ask for Christmas. Oh, just well, saying. Ale Alex's birthday. Alex's birthday is this month. Oh, really? <laughs> Carmen is 16th of July. Soon. Soon. Ooh, comes first. Carmen comes first. Yeah. And then Jackson. And then me. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, well, well, for this group, I, I is... <laughs> okay. So I I can send the card, but are we having parties? No. <laughs> Maybe now with all the love. Everybody's convidado. Is that depending on lockdown rules now? É yeah, mais é mais certo que eu que eu vá na tua em fevereiro daí porque tem que esperar até o final do ano aqui o negócio. Oh Jesus! Oh, that's all right. But well, for this group, it's easy to write letters for everyone in here. Oh, But like yes. the exercise it to maybe someone that we kind of just connect by Facebook and don't talk a long time so we can make that connection stronger and send them some caring um, some some love I don't know you know a friendship message I don't know it's just to connect on a on a real level not only social media but like you know or just call. or just a call or just the a call, unplanned yeah. call yeah no, it's if right. it's hard to send a letter I'm happy with the gizadinho <laughs> oh, <laughs> for so, so for so vegan. You can do vegan, eh? I think you can, yes. Yeah, Clark, Clark. Yeah, yeah, with mushrooms. It's good with mushrooms. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah of course you can. So we just put the exercise all one together. We can do a party with our favorite food. We can bring a a, a, a plant that we love to To, to exchange, you know, yeah, a book works. to give a present and a plastic bag so we can collect some rubbish afterwards. And can play my favorite song. music. And song. play my favorite yeah, music. <laughs> With simple That's things, right. we can put an amazing, you know. And my favorite, and my favorite music, music only Yvonne and Colleen will know. Probably you guys don't know. Mm. Oh, Let's no. see if Colleen knows that or Yvonne. 
What Toast is it? Toast and marmalade for tea. For tea. Saving 